here to talk about the launch of the largest prize ever, a uh, $100 million X Prize for carbon capture, and here with a very special guest, uh, probably one of the greatest innovators and engineer of our time, the CEO of Tesla, of SpaceX, of a bunch of other companies, uh, and someone I'm proud to call a friend. Elon. Hey, Peter. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the perfect setting for our conversation today. Yeah. So we're going to um, talk a little bit about the rules, uh, try and encourage teams around the world to register for this thing, yeah. get as many innovators, students talking about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, our, our goal is like basically to uh, do something that, uh, it, you know, to it, have, it, have it be sort of interesting, fun, and, and ultimately useful, um, and to spur uh, uh, creative ideas for what is actually the smartest way to take the trillions of tons of carbon that we we've removed from the ground and will remove from the ground, um, from deep, deep underground. And, and, and we've, we've placed that carbon in the atmosphere and oceans, um, which obviously changes the, the chemical constituency of the surface of the earth. Yeah. Um, and um, now, now I, 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 I should sort of um, measure, measure my statements in, in that um, I think I think we, the, the Earth, like I don't, I don't think we're currently doomed, to be clear. This is very <laughs> important, uh, very importantly, um, you know, there's, there, there, there are people in all, all parts of the spectrum from, ranging from nothing to worry about, uh, CO2 is, just makes things better, to uh, we're doomed and there's nothing we can do about it. I am somewhere in the middle. <laughs> um, so my concern with the CO2 is not kind of where we are today. Um, or even you know the current uh, rate rate of carbon generation, but really, uh, if it if we if carbon generation keeps accelerating and we keep getting um, a uh, that that uh, uh, increase in the in the Keeling curve, you know the CO two parts per million in the atmosphere, and if 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 we keep going and if we're complacent, uh, then I think we we could th there is some risk of of um, sort of nonlinear climate change, um, so. Um, so you know, thus far we, the, the, we've seen the CO2 parts per million be, be fairly linear on, on our time scale, uh, although it looks very exponential on a uh, geologic time scale. Um, and, uh, but there, there are certain potential nonlinear events, like uh, if we raise the temperature to the point where we um, melt the Siberian traps or something like that. And, and release, methane escapes, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's just a, a massive amount of, of sort of frozen dead uh, plant and animal matter um, in um, in Siberia, there's potentially trapped uh, uh, gases deep in the ocean. If, you, if the ocean warms, yeah. that could be released. So, uh, you, you know, these this is just these are just risks that are not wise to take. Um, and since we know that uh, long term, we're going to have to have renewable energy anyway, um, uh, because we'll, we'll we'll run out of oil and gas. It's not going to last forever. Um, so we know we know where this ends up. This has to end up with uh, renewable, sustainable energy, um, it's tautological. Um, it's really just a question of, do we try to get there sooner or later? Um, and, and we should just try to get there sooner. It's, uh, it's obvious. Well, why run the, why run the ex how long do you want to run this experiment? Yeah, it's, and, it's and also true that even if we stopped CO2 production, that's probably still not enough, that we do need mechanisms for extraction of CO2 from the atmosphere and the oceans that well, don't exist right now. You know, as I said, I, I, I am, people sometimes think I'm, Sort of like, I, I, I'm kind of in the middle of the spectrum, you know. Um, I think if we stopped CO2 production today, which obviously we could not do without civilization coming to a grinding halt um, and mass starvation and, and all sorts of terrible things happening, um, so we could not stop CO2 generation today. But I think at the you know at the sort of 400, possibly even 500 ppm level, I, I think it's pro probably okay. Um, but if uh, you know, as the, as the world industrializes and we're sort of at eight billion people, get to nine billion people, um, have a, a lot more industrial output per person, um, you could see the you know, you know, at, at, at what what might be okay, it's sort of four or five hundred um, parts per million of CO two in the atmosphere might become quite dire at a thousand. Yeah, um, and the trend is certainly in that direction if we don't do anything about it. So. Um, that, that's why I think it's just probably an unwise experiment to to run. Um, even if you think that the this, this, this is why I think it sh should be a compelling argument to even those who um, would uh, 
assign a low probability to um, increase CO2 causing problems. Like let's say you think it's 99.9% .9 likely that, uh, that adding all the CO2 to the ocean's atmosphere is, is going to be fine. So, that you, so you're saying there's a 0.1% chance of disaster. Well, there's only one, we're still, right now we're only got one planet. <laughs> well, even a 0.1% chance of disaster, why run that risk? That's crazy. So, um, so I think the, the, what's likely to play out is that we will continue to add a lot of, a uh, lot more CO2 to the ocean's atmosphere. Um, and also, you know, ocean acidification, as you know, is, is also an issue. It's, you don't want to, you don't want to sort of add carbonic acid to the oceans and, and change the pH level because um, it destroys reefs and, and all that. So, Which it's actively doing right now as we're watching. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, the, yes. So this is a problem. Now, I remember when I first met you, Elon, uh, you had, it was about 2000, and I remember you had two massively transformative missions. It was yeah. one making the uh, making humanity multi interplanetary, yeah, and the second was bringing us to a sustainable economy, yeah, a, su a sustainable energy economy, right? Exactly. And I think you've done pretty damn good. <laughs> are you Are you happy with the progress you've made? Um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's hard to complain. This part, you know, the outcome so far has been been great. Um, although, obviously, to be, you know, we've we've not uh, we've not yet sent anyone to Mars, and um, and hopefully will in the future. And um, in fact, just. Uh, a few days ago, or last, early last, late last week, I guess, um, NASA awarded SpaceX the contract. Awesome, two point eight, two point nine billion dollars uh, yeah. for the next lunar lander. Yeah, to, so SpaceX, a SpaceX craft will be the, the next craft to put humans on, uh, on the moon. I believe the first human will be a woman, actually, this time. Yes. So, uh, this is very, this is great. Yeah. Um, so, um, but of course, we have to actually do it, um, and. Uh, and uh, then we've got tomorrow. We've got the uh, our third astronaut launch to yeah, the space just, station. Before we dive into the to the carbon removal uh, rules and so forth. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's obviously a bit of a dichotomy because our rockets do produce carbon. You know. Uh, yeah, true. Like, oh, what a hypocrite. You know? True. No, no. Um, we, we got. Uh, he's obviously just <laughs> he's obviously just in for the money. Um, but <laughs> but let's talk about let's talk about the crew two crew two mission. I feel I should address this. This I right. should be a hypocrite by launching rockets that that produce carbon. Uh, it, here, here's the problem is uh, right now there is there's really no way to get around the physics of a rocket. So uh, I think it's important for the long term uh, preserva preservation and and ultimately the expansion and extension of the, the, the scope and scale of consciousness uh, and the long term. Uh, probably a survival of humanity and life as we know it, we must become a multi-planet species. Uh, because there are all these risks that we can't control. Yeah, existential risks. There's all these Asteroid existential strikes, risks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's like... Super volcanoes. You know, we could do, a, a, you know, <laughs> we could have a World War Three uh, or something, you know, there's... Um, like, I'm optimistic about the future, but you, but you could also say like, okay, well, so how long do you think civilization will last before there's a catastrophic event? If you say infinity, you're, this is not correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> This is, this is not, uh, history does not suggest that. <laughs> <laughs> history just suggests we do dumb things to our civilizations all the time. You know, and, and you know, this is the ancient Egyptians, the Romans, ancient Romans, where are they now? <laughs> Let's do the video series. Where, where are they now? The Babylonians, peak. Sumerians, yeah. the, yeah, you name it, you know. So, um, so there's uh, been many civilizations that have risen and fallen. And anyway, we've we got to preserve the, uh, we're going to become multiplanetary, and, and right now the only way to do that is with um, with, with rockets that uh, do burn fuel. Um, but we do have a long-term plan for sustainability of um, of even rocket flights uh, by uh, generating uh, propellant uh, using um, sustainable energy, wind and solar, mm -hmm. uh, to generate. Starting first with uh, liquid oxygen, um, and for our Starship vehicle, uh, it's uh, almost 80% liquid oxygen, uh, and um, 20% uh, uh, liquid methane, um, and um, with the oxygen, it's obviously pretty easy to create that. Uh, you just use um, wind and solar electricity, and, um, and you do air, air separator, because you've got the oxygen already in the air, the plants are making the oxygen, um, so you can, use just, you can just use electricity, basically, renewable electricity, to create 80% of the propellant on the rocket. And then for the remaining 20%, uh, you can use the Sabatier process, where you, take, you actually take CO2 out of the atmosphere, and you combine that with water to create CH4 and, and more O2. Yep. Um, and that's and that's in fact what we would do on Mars. Sure. To generate propellant. Sure. So 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 there is a long-term plan for sustainable generation of propellant uh, for the rockets. I do want to emphasize that. 
Um, and if there's, some, if there's some other way to do that now, we, we certainly would. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm just trying try to sort of address this apparent inconsistency in, um, you know, if Jeremy and Carbon is bad, why, why are you doing that with rockets? Yeah.